Would you like to do more deep work? Of course you do. And if you're here, you're probably interested in doing that using a task manager. I get this question from time to time. Peter, how do I handle deep work in my task manager? And it's a great question because the way that people often are taught to use task managers, it's not necessarily immediately apparent how you handle deep work. It's obvious how you handle small tasks like admin tasks or watering the lawn, but how do you use your task manager to make sure that you get to the work that is going to make a difference? Great question. Let's talk about that today. Now, in case you're new, my name is Peter. I teach people how to be more organized and more productive. And I do that with my free videos right here on YouTube. And I also have some full length courses, which now have over 1000 uh, paying students. If you are interested in learning how to use a task manager and you're still choosing which task manager to use, you might like my free mini course. Um, the link is in the description below. It's called choosing the right task manager for you. Brand new free mini course. Check that out. I think you'll find that very helpful in selecting a good task manager that works for you. Okay, let's talk today about handling deep work in your task manager. Now, just to set the stage for the context, let me define deep work. So deep work is a term, um, Cal Newport came up with this. Cal Newport is a computer scientist and productivity teacher, uh, and he wrote a book uh, called Deep Work. And so Cal defines deep work as professional activities performed in a state of distraction-free concentration that push your cognitive capabilities to their limit. And these efforts create new value, improve your skill, and are hard to replicate. So it's really about doing like the hard work that makes a difference, okay, that really adds value. And he contrasts this with shallow work, shallow work being admin tasks, responding to emails, right? Things that may be necessary sometimes, but that are not really going to move the needle, okay? So let's talk about task managers. So um, here we are in things three, which is the task manager that I use. But this video and this thinking applies to any task manager, really. So I often teach people how to use their task manager in a way that really was popularized by David Allen in his book, Getting Things Done. I'm looking at my desk. I don't have getting things done on my desk right now, but you might be familiar with this book. Um, it's an approach where you're thinking in terms of projects and in terms of tasks, right? So I can create a project in my task manager, right? And I can say, um, renovate the kitchen and we can go add all sorts of tasks to this, right? We can uh, say set a budget and then we can say, um, decide on the feel we want the kitchen to have. And we can then say, um, ask for some uh, proposals from kitchen renovators, etc. right? And, and you can think of lots of tasks that together comprise this project. Um, and w when you're working on something like this, even though this, this probably matters, renovating your kitchen, it's pretty obvious what the steps are that you're gonna walk through. But other work doesn't lend itself to, to this kind of thinking. For example, um, writing an article. Okay, if you're writing an article, let's say for a newspaper or whatever magazine, something to be published, even if it's like a blog post for your company's website, um, it's harder to put that into these steps. Now, I do have, I like to use project templates for some stuff. So for example, when I'm creating a YouTube video, um, I actually have a list of things that I do. So I have a template here and I have a list of steps that I go through um, to create a YouTube video. But one of the steps is record video, you know, and so uh, in these things that are harder to do, you often have one step that doesn't lend itself to being broken down as much. So that may be writing the article, recording the video, um, coming up with a new marketing strategy for your small business, right? Or in my case, uh, giving a speech, preparing a speech. I'm a member of a Toastmasters club, and so I often find myself giving speeches. And the process of writing a speech, like writing out the script or, or coming up with it is a very organic process. And it's hard to put that into tasks. So let me show you um, the template that I use for preparing a speech. Basically, I say choose a topic, write an outline, okay, choose a title, um, and then rehearse, you know, <laughs> but like, these things are not as detailed as you might see in other tasks. So for example, if I'm doing a business admin task, let's say I'm doing my accounting work, right? I'm, I'm updating my quarterly bookkeeping. I have a project for that too. But my quarterly bookkeeping, it's super like obvious which steps I go through. Um, 
I'll show you, let's see, yeah, so my quarterly accounting, there's like very specific steps that I go through um, to do the quarterly accounting. And when you're doing deep work, you often are not able to create such specific steps in your task manager, but that's okay. And so this is the thing that I want you to take away is even though for deep work, so writing the speech, writing the article, um, coming up with a new marketing strategy, whatever it is, even though you cannot break that down into next actions, as David Allen would call them, that doesn't mean that this stuff doesn't go in your task manager, okay? It just means that it goes in your task manager at a higher level. So you always want to put steps, uh, tasks in your task manager under a project at like a level that makes sense, okay? So let's do one, let's create a project and I'll say create a new marketing strategy. So you might say um, schedule a meeting with, uh, with all stakeholders and agree on requirements, okay? That's something that you can do, but then you've got to have that meeting and you've actually got to talk to people. And so that's okay, you know? So having the actual meeting and talking to people doesn't need to go in your task manager. And uh, what is another thing you could say? Um, draft a strategy and share the draft strategy with the stakeholders. Uh, schedule a meeting to discuss the draft strategy. Okay, and so you see, I'm still coming up with a logical sequence of tasks to do. But there's a big one in here, which is draft the actual marketing strategy. And so we could break that down into further steps, but it often doesn't make sense. This is often the kind of thing where you're, you're showering and you're having some good thoughts, or you're going for a walk and you're letting thoughts come to you, or maybe you're just sitting at your desk and you're doodling or whatever. And so a lot of these deep work tasks, the ones that actually move the needle, like drafting the actual strategy, as opposed to scheduling the meeting to talk about it, um, those things are organic, harder to transform into very specific tasks on a list. That's totally okay. Doesn't mean they don't go in your task manager. It just means that they go in there like this. You still create a project, create a new marketing strategy. You still list the deep work as well as all the shallow tasks that go around it, right? Shallow work as Cal Newport defines it being the opposite of deep work. And this, there's nothing wrong with this. It's not, it's, task, it's not that task managers cannot handle deep work or something like that, right? Um, I think often people see their task manager as a tool to not have to think anymore or not have to do hard thinking. I'll put all my tasks and projects in the task manager and then all I have to do is execute and just follow the steps and I won't have to do the hard thinking. But actually your task manager is for the complete opposite purpose. The purpose of your task manager is to free up space in your head so that you can do the hard thinking with your head so that you can do the deep work, the really important stuff like drafting the strategy, writing the article, writing the speech, right? So that your brain is not occupied with, oh yeah, I got to schedule a meeting. Oh yeah, I got to reply to Bob's email. Oh yeah, I got to like do this or that. Um, so that you have the mental space to do this work, the deep work that is the most valuable work. So um, deep work goes in your task manager, just like anything else. And you may have this task sitting in your task manager for a while. I often find myself, um, if I, for example, I am currently creating a new marketing strategy. So I often find myself having a task like this sit in my task manager for quite a while. No problem, that's okay. It's an organic process. Nothing is going wrong. That's just the way that it works, okay? So, uh, when it comes to actually doing the deep work, um, it's a little bit trickier because one of the benefits of having a task manager, okay, is like, let's go back to the renovate the kitchen project. Uh, I often tell people, if you're stuck on a project or on a task, break it down into smaller chunks. So you might have been wanting to renovate your kitchen for years, but you never do it. And so my advice would be create a renovate the kitchen project and list out the steps that you need to do. That's helpful because if you list, list out the steps, now you've got specific things. So, you, so your first task would be to set a budget. Um, we can actually probably uh, make this task more specific by say, um, schedule a time to sit down with my partner to agree on a budget. That might actually be better. Probably maybe something you're doing together with your partner, okay? And so I often tell people by breaking tasks down like this, 
uh, you reduce your tendency to procrastinate. It's easier to get started because it's easier to do schedule a time to sit down with my partner to agree on a budget than it is to complete the task or renovate the kitchen, or in this case, the project. Um, and so with deep work, you may find that you are not able to break it down more, or at least that it doesn't make sense to break it down more. Um, like we could break down draft a strategy into multiple chunks, like create a mind map, may actually make sense to do that. But at some point you're going to get stuck. It's just going to be an organic process. Um, that's okay. So in terms of actually doing the deep work, the strategy of breaking it down into really small pieces may not work. So what can you do instead? One thing I suggest is time blocking. Um, you don't need to time block your entire calendar all of a sudden if you're not used to that. But I would say set some time aside on your calendar, literally block it off on your calendar, especially if you're working in an environment where other people can invite you to meetings, block some time off at least two hours, maybe more like three or four hours, go for a walk or go somewhere where you will not be disturbed, right? So part of Cal Newport's uh, definition of deep work was when you're, you're focused, you're concentrated, not distracted. So block off some time to work on this and then, um, with focus, complete this task. Okay. So that would be my strategy for actually doing the deep work because you cannot always, when it comes to deep work, use the strategy of breaking it down. Anyway, I think that was enough for today. Hope this helped. Um, would love it if you left a comment telling me what you thought of this video, whether you found it helpful, of course, uh, subscribe to the channel, give thumbs up. Those things always help get my message out there to people. Uh, and like I said, if you are still choosing a task manager, check out my free mini course, choosing the right task manager for you, because you'll learn the three criteria that I judge task managers by to see whether they're good enough. Um, and you'll see my specific recommendations for apps. So check that out. Thanks for watching today. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day.